So the presentation will focus on, uh, on the NCP framework development. Uh, what is the NCP framework? It's the guidance that uh, the GTFCC is working on um, for countries to, on how to develop their national cholera uh, control uh, or elimination plans. And um, the associated offer of service, which is the package of technical guidance and technical documents and, and support to countries that is produced by the GTFCC, um, and of course, especially uh, in this occasion, the um, surveillance offer of service. What is the surveillance working group? I'm talking about the broad surveillance working group, which is composed by the two working groups on APN Lab can provide to countries for uh, their national cholera elimination plans, uh, very much linked to what uh, Fran and Marie-Laure and Dominique were, were saying earlier. We have a strategy. How can uh, we actually support countries to adopt it and to implement it, which is the, the purpose of the, of, of the GTFCC, country focus. But before that, I just wanted to give a brief overview of um, where the GTFCC and its working groups are, uh, because it's very much linked, all this technical work is very much linked to the development of the framework. A lot of this um, has been already presented uh, before, so I will go uh, briefly. Um, in the past year, since the surveillance working group uh, meeting in uh, 2018, in April, we had uh, the GTFCC, uh, the fifth GTFCC plenary meeting in, in June. We had the case management working group in uh, November 2018 and the OCV working group uh, um, in, to, in December 2018. The first working group of the year was the WASH uh, just um, a couple of months ago. And um, now we have the, the surveillance uh, working group and then the next event will be the plenary uh, GTFCC meeting on the 3rd and 4th of um, of. Um, of uh, June, where we we aim to bring all the technical work for validation by the by the by the general uh, GTFCC uh, assembly, and in that occasion also, as Dominic mentioned, the the steering committee that uh, was established uh, for the GTFCC will will also meet. The overall achievements uh, are cross sectoral and were already touched. Uh, the cross sectoral achievements across the, the, all the working groups were already touched by, by my colleagues, but um, we heard about the GTFCC, uh, the revised yellow book, which was completed. In the, um, there, there's been already a draft print form, and also uh, the website, which is um, uh, choleraoutbreak.org. Um, um, I apologize, I didn't put it here. Uh, but if you check choleraoutbreak.org, you should find the, 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 the yellow book online. <clears throat> and that's more of a static version, but we're also developing a, a smartphone app, uh, which will have uh, a lot of the tools that are presented in, in paper format in the, G in the yellow book as interactive uh, calculators, uh, line listing, uh, etc. And this is, of course, uh, a bit more complex and uh, to, to develop, so this is, uh, is uh, currently not, not available yet. Um, we have uh, circulated, uh, I think to most of you, uh, uh, the first draft of the color elimination plan framework, with this uh, NCP framework that we were talking about. Um, and we aim to finalize it, uh, at least the first draft, before the, the the GTFCC meeting in, in June, so, so that we can have a first tool the, for countries to be used. Of course, it will be, it's a work in progress, but that's the, that's the aim. And uh, we have uh, finalized the cholera investment case, and we will hear more about it uh, immediately after my presentation. And uh, within the, the, the investment case, we are also working on development of tools for countries to actually not only plan the technical activities, but also to, to budget uh, their cholera control, or, uh, let's say, elimination activities <laughs> in, in their NCPs. Uh, briefly, by working group, uh, although my colleagues have, uh, have already covered um, that, um, the surveillance working group is, is the, the priorities are working on the methodology for hotspot identification, which is an integral part of the 
of the NCP. The national cholera elimination plans are based, as, as Fran said, on a clear identification as the areas to be targeted. And also collaborating with the WASH working group in terms of uh, not only defining the, the epidemiological criteria, uh, which relate to the cholera burden, uh, of course, but also the risk factors, uh, the vulnerabilities that, uh, that make cholera a problem, which are mainly, if not exclusively, um, WASH uh, vulnerability indicators. So that there is a collaboration between these two working groups. And the working on, on how to record the, the cases, the epidemiological information and the reporting tools within the Yellow Book and also for the, for the global roadmap and the research agenda. Um, similarly, the, work, the laboratory working group is also working to feed into the NCP and, and, and support countries in, in progress towards the roadmap with the, the different um, technical notes and tools that were already covered by, by Mary Lohr. The case management working group um, has worked uh, on a technical note on the use of antibiotics, which also is an important part of a, of a cholera control plan. The technical note on, on cholera and, uh, and acute uh, malnutrition, which is, has been, been finalized. They're working with the WASH working group uh, with the note on WASH and CTCs, uh, which is also been, been finalized. And um, is working also on, on adapting the current technical note on how to organize the cholera care, how to set up the network of CTCs, ORPs, etc. cetera, um, which is an, an exercise that, again, the countries um, are conducting um, uh, locally. Um, and is based on, on each country's uh, reality. Um, the OCV working group uh, has provided a continuous oversight on OCV forecasting and supply management. Uh, uh, Dominique mentioned uh, the, the urgent situation of uh, still or even more um, increased uh, demand uh, rather than supply. Although the good news is that this, the, demand, the supply has, has indeed increased um, with, uh, I think, uh, uh, 10, 10 million, more than 10 million doses actually of vaccines just in, in 2018. And overall we are we're touching 40 million doses um, of vaccine use. Um, working with, with Gavi, within the Gavi VIS on the forecast and on the, on the future of the cholera vaccination program, the integration, of course, between OCV and WASH is an integral part of, of, the, of any national cholera elimination plans, working on research and M&E, and, uh, and on, uh, on CTC aspects, on the logistic aspects of, of using um, the vaccine out of the cold chain. Uh, the WASH working group um, has been working also on, uh, on the producing the technical uh, guidance for countries to what, what should be included in a national cholera elimination plan in terms of wash interventions, both for the immediate outbreak and emergency response, which is fairly clear and <laughs> easier in a way to conduct, but more importantly, what should be part of the axis two of the, these longer term interventions that, that we want countries to, to, to undertake if they, if they uh, want to keep cholera out of, of the country. Um, and uh, as Dominique already mentioned, um, uh, we have seen in the, in the past year a, a great um, country and partner engagement with uh, several countries engaging. And multi-sectoral country support of, uh, of uh, technical support that has gone to, to the countries under a GTFCC hat by, by different partners. Some of them are listed here, but <laughs> uh, I could list ma many more. So now to the actual title of the presentation, the, the NCP framework. Um, so the roadmap implementation requires uh, the development of, um, of processes to guide counters in planning and constructing their national color elimination or, or slash control plans. And on how to access within uh, this framework, how to access the support of, um, of the GTFCC in network uh, to do so. 
So the key objective is um, of the roadmap and of this document is um, uh, to encourage a multi-sectoral implementation um, of, of the roadmap, um, provide countries with guidance on, on the national cholera control plans, and ensure that within these plans um, there is also a strong monitoring and evaluation component, which will be essential to demonstrate um, and to achieve, uh, to achieve and demonstrate uh, cholera elimination. So on one, on one sense, we have a, um, a set of, uh, the GTFCC is working on this set of practical guidance to countries and partners on how to develop the NCPs. And then in parallel, we're working on the processes on how the, the, the countries can then uh, submit the, the NCPs uh, for review to the GTFCC so that technical and practical recommendations can be made on how to, to to improve it, uh, validate it, and then um, endorse it, so that then the, the implementation can be can be can be guided. Uh, this process is uh, has originated. Um, we 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 were let's say inspired by the, the request that countries uh, do for uh, using OCV in 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 uh, in, the, in their in their hotspots. So we have countries that submit their requests uh, to the um, to the GTFCC, and uh, we wanted to change from uh, a simple request for for OCV to a more broader request uh, for for support in, in in controlling cholera using a multi multi sectoral multi strategic approach. Um, the the process to develop NCPs. Um, has uh, five steps. Um, the first one is is um, more of a theoretical step, but it's it's the, the most important is actually the commitment, the engagement, and we have seen how most of the countries today are engaged uh, at at, uh, at least at the first stage, but most of them are actually at the final stage already on on developing this this color elimination plans. Once this, uh, this engagement has been uh, materialized, the countries will, of course, uh, conduct a situational analysis to, to identify to where exactly the problem is, to, to produce the, that information that is then uh, used for, for actions, which are the interventions, the multisectoral interventions. So once the situational analysis is done, the country establishes a multi-sectoral uh, cholera elimination program. Uh, we're using the word program, but uh, um, this is not prescriptive. It can be a coordination mechanism or anything that the country uh, may uh, see fit for purpose uh, in, in their context. And uh, within this program or mechanism or plan, then, uh, of course, there needs to be uh, also a budgeting exercises. Uh, in order to mobilize the, the funds. And, um, and then uh, this process is endorsed and the, and this, the plan is submitted to, to, to the GTFCC. So the, the laboratory and uh, surveillance working group are, are especially um, uh, important for the first part, for the situation analysis, but I, I, I think that as we have seen in other in, in, in the other presentations, actually the surveillance is important across all the all the process of a, of a cholera uh, elimination plan, from the situational analysis to the monitoring and evaluation, of course. In terms of the situational analysis, countries are, are requested to do a, uh, um, are requested countries do a, an historical review to um, identify the, their cholera hotspots using mainly epidemiological data. And then um, evaluate the contextual factors and those risk factors uh, that make uh, districts at risk or not of, of cholera, which are basically um, mainly WASH indicators, as I was saying. And this is an exercise that is helpful uh, to prioritize the, the hotspots identified and to plan the, the specific interventions. Uh, uh, these are, are the pillars uh, um, by which the situational analysis then, then goes in, into the deep, um, into, into the specifics of what is the capacity uh, in those hotspots in terms of coordination, in terms of surveillance, in terms of, of management, of ca uh, case management, OCV, WASH, and, and the community engagement. 
once this situational analysis is done, um, then um, the, these are the drops of the different pillars. <laughs> they 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 are funneled into the into the cholera um, into the NCP, which is then produced. Um, and submitted. And this is a process that we're still currently developing on, on how once the support is submitted, how the GTFCC can then um, provide support and and in hand in hand with the countries on, on their um, uh, evaluation and, and rollout. And this, this review and this uh, will obviously focus on, on main uh, on three main areas that the first one and, and most important, I, I, it's the multi-sectoral approach. How to ensure that all these pillars are actually integrated and there is a good synergy within within uh, all the um, all the sectors. Um, another uh, set of cr of uh, criteria for evaluation of the plans is obviously how the the, the evidence built by the situational analysis to address the problems, <laughs> and then. Of course, the expected impact um, of of the plan by by pillar, and and uh, that's the the theory, the the, the let's say the the, the framework, um, and then within this framework, uh, uh, the GTFCC is also working on the tools and and detailed guidance um, for for the plans to to be for for the offer of the so-called offer of service for the countries to, to develop their, their plans. And each working group will develop guidance according to their pillar of competency, will or has already developed, as we have seen. Um, and then we, um, there's the, the work ongoing on the reporting template, a checklist, what type of indicators we, we want countries to, to report upon. Um, and. Uh, create uh, ideally uh, country profiles and dashboards to see uh, so that countries can see uh, exactly where they fit uh, in their roadmap to 2030 and and also comparisons between between countries can can be done and countries and and, and within the countries the different hotspots and programs etc in terms of the specific um, um, offer of services um, within the laboratory. They were already touched uh, by, by Marie Lor, and this is what will be discussed uh, at this specific meeting. One is the job aids. Uh, um, all the technical guidance that has been pro uh, produced with the support of the, of the working group and, the, and, and its consultants. Um, the work uh, ongoing on the pre-qualification of RDTs, how, to, how do we can we improve uh, the, the existing RDTs and what type of processes are, are in place to do that? And of course, the molecular diagnostic uh, testing. Um, especially, what is the role of, of these techniques within the NCPs? Um, and uh, what kind of role uh, the countries, what kind of role in operational research can, can also be done for, for this? Um, uh, molecular diagnostic testing. There, there's uh, many countries that are interested in, in using these techniques, and the GTFCC is, is intending to provide a step-to-step -step, um, guidance on, on what they're for and, and how they can be useful for, for color elimination. And, and then at a global level, how this, this, uh, how, how this global repositories work and how can we contribute to to feed in this global repositories, uh, global database, and how can countries access this, in, this information. Uh, in terms of the epidemiology offer of service, um, there is the surveillance guidance, the first uh, guidance document that was already published uh, a, few, a few years back. And then how we support, how can the GTFCC support countries with the cholera situational analysis and, and how, um, especially uh, this afternoon, um, we will hear from countries how they actually have identified the hotspots and this will feed the discussions tomorrow on uh, how can we actually come up with a standardized uh, guide, guidance, a uh, set of recommendations to countries on how to conduct the situational analysis, which will have to be very practical and, and action-oriented and, and, and simple to do, but at the same time, 
um, not forget the, the the good evidence based on on good uh, and sound um, evidence. <laughs> and uh, one of the aspects that will also be discussed, as, as Fran was, was mentioning, is how we monitor the implementation of the cholera roadmap and define a set of indicators that we want to monitor and what kind of data is currently uh, used, utilized by countries at the moment, uh, by the different networks, and how we can we consolidate this and make it uh, more seamless and, and also easier for countries to report and, and avoid, uh, and avoid uh, duplication. This is the last slide. Uh, it's uh, just about uh, the, this, the work that is going on, on this country profile and what type of indicators we want to discuss. Um, uh, we will discuss them uh, during the, the, the session this afternoon and also um, uh, in some of the working group uh, work tomorrow at the, of the AP working group. And so especially this working group is focusing, will focus on the, on the surveillance indicators in terms of cases, deaths, <laughs> and also in terms of process, what type of uh, information we want to have from, from the laboratory analysis. So how, do we want councils to report the number of RDTs that they use? the number of cultures that are conducted and all this type of, uh, of, of things. We, this is exactly why <laughs> the, the, advi the expert advice from, from, the, from the working group will be, will be very helpful for us to, to develop this, this, uh, this guidance. And then, of course, there's not only surveillance uh, information, but also OCV data, which is fair, more straightforward because it's just about a matter of the amount of doses submit, um, used, uh, shipped, etc. But it's key to link the OCV data to the surveillance data to demonstrate the impact of the vaccination campaigns. And the same for the WASH. Um, and, uh, and last but not least, a set of indicators that uh, can uh, help the countries to, to show where they are in terms of funding all, all these activities and their budgeting and, and um, etc. So um, I, th I anticipate very exciting discussions in, this, uh, in, this, um, in these two days, and this was just to give you a, a flair um, of, of uh, the three days to come. Thank you very much. Melissa. <laughs>